Chris Holtman is back in the Big East. He takes over the DePaul Blue Demons program introduced on Monday as their new head coach. 13 years as a head coach, seven NCAA tournament trips, took Butler to the Sweet 16 back in 2017. Chris, congratulations. Welcome back to the Big East. What's the significance of that for you being back in this league, which you had a lot of success and a lot of battles in as well? No, John, great to be with you. Great to be with you, by the way. By the way, all of us coaches that were tournament teams during the COVID year, we always get shafted when they go the 13 years and seven instead of eight. That's but, true. That's your point. Um, uh, it, it's, it's great to be back. This is, I think, John, as good a league as there is in the country. And I think it's, I think it's the best coaching league in the country. I love the way that this league plays. Uh, offensively and defensively. I think it's um, it's a fun league to watch. It's very visually enjoyable to watch. And the, the challenge of taking over a program that, that everyone knows has struggled uh, was just really appealing, John. And to do it in a league that I have such great respect for uh, was a real draw. What about the program was appealing? Dwayne Peavy. President Rob Manuel, their their vision for what this could be, John, uh, was uh, was really appealing. Now, it took a lot of dialogue, a lot of conversations, a lot of me really diving into, okay, uh, I really want the specifics of this. Why has the program struggled uh, for so long? Um, what are some things that maybe are fixable? Um, but having conversations with, with them, their vision, uh, their plan, uh, was just overall, to be honest with you, was uh, was a game changer and ultimately the decider. Was it your thought process to jump right back into coaching? It was not, John. I was not. I was comfortable on a beach um, for a couple weeks um, with a drink in my hand and, um, you know, uh, away from – I'm very comfortable away from the spotlight. So I was comfortable away from all that. And uh, so I was, I was prepared to sit out a year and probably uh, come on, you know, one of your podcasts and talk about college basketball, do some media stuff um, away from the stress. But as I just started to learn more about this job, the challenge of, of, can we do this? You know, the challenge of, of rebuilding it, I believe, Certainly we can, or else I wouldn't have done it, uh, was was a big draw and ultimately the deciding factor. Talking with people around DePaul, Chris, even looking at where this program is right now, it, it was clear when this search was initiated that your AD, Dwayne Peavy, and as you said, your president, Rob Manuel, there's a difference. There's a difference at DePaul than maybe the DePaul that you were facing when you were at Butler, I'm not talking about potential. I'm just talking about the feel, the vibe of the program. How, how much would you reflect on, on that difference and how much different DePaul can be with this regime? Well, you know, Dwayne's been in Kentucky, obviously. He's been at the, the blue blood of all blue bloods and he's worked with coach Cal. And I talked to, I talked to Cal about Dwayne and uh, got, got his thoughts and Cal obviously loves Dwayne, loves him. Um, and so he's really seen, you know, what it looks like at the highest of levels. And I do think that really helps us chart this course together, brick by brick. Um, I think uh, he's going to lean on me. I'm certainly going to lean on him. Uh, but his vision for what this basketball program can be, and obviously President, President Manuel's support, um, was, was critical. Um, you know, we've got work to do, clearly. Um, there's no quick fixes, not even in today's climate of college basketball. Uh, I think when there are challenges that are great, but I think, uh, you know, there's real optimism that this brick by brick can be moved in the right direction. And I'm certain it can be. What are the first bricks for you? The right players, the right kind of kids, whether that's current guys on the roster or obviously the addition. Um, but it's always about the people, John, as you know, um, the success we had both at Butler and Ohio State, it was always about the kids. It was always about the people. It was always about guys that uh, were talented players who were 
uh, competitive, who played with an edge and who were willing to sacrifice um, and then had great dreams and goals. So it's it's going to be about that first and foremost. We'll build a, a great staff. We're in the process of doing that. Uh, we will uh, attack this thing uh, aggressively and uh, I'm excited about it. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you, you know this, I'm sure that it was talked about at your introduction where the outsider is saying, well, yes, they, they went 0 and 20 in their league. They, they didn't win a game in the last 75 days of the season. That was then that was then you're taking this over, but, but there is that natural person saying, well, they haven't danced in 20 years. Why, 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 why take on this opportunity? So, so why? I had that, John. I, I did. I had people who I like and trust and who care about me, whether, you know, there are people, people like you who know this landscape of college basketball from top to bottom, you know, better than a coach could, you know, media people, friends who said, why would you do this? Why not just wait a year? Why not? At the end of the day, I just really believe in what this place can be. And I believed in the vision of, of Dwayne and, and President Rob. I, I think uh, the challenge was appealing, John. Um, but if there was just the challenge without the support behind it, I don't know that I would have done it. And I felt like those two were uh, matched. So the portal is open. The transfer portal has opened up. I've heard that. <laughs> the mo I'm assuming the moment you're done talking with me, are, are the phone lines that active? They are. They, they most definitely are. But it's always about the right kids. But you're right, John. Yeah, it's it's active both ways, right? You know, it's uh, it's it's very busy right now. It, to go a step beyond, is it a problem in your mind that it's open here when you got some kids that are frankly getting ready to play in the NCAA tournament? I don't love it. Um, I, I don't love that you have this degree of distraction. I get, you know, um, uh, there's a window. There's only a, there's there's a certain window. I, I don't love it. I think. Um, the focus should be on what is the greatest postseason tournament in all of sports, which is the NCAA tournament. But uh, it's the it's the life we've chose. It's kind of the world we live in right now. Could it get moved back? I, you know, I could probably get into the weeds on that, but uh, that's for another day. Uh, you referenced in this league with you now in this coaching tree in the Big East, nine of the 11 have made the Sweet 16. Three of the last seven national champions have been from the Big East. Could be a fourth and eighth the way that some of the, the league's top teams are playing. Just join in this league where, where you have a Dan Hurley, where you have a Shaka Smart, where you have a Greg McDermott, uh, who you know well, and a Rick Patino who is, yeah. who is immersed in this league. What pops in your head? Well, and I think probably the two coaches that haven't been to a Sweet 16, they're just young. They haven't, you know, they haven't haven't been in doing it very long. So, and they're really good coaches. Um, both of those guys are really good coaches, as we know, both at Providence and Villanova. So it's only a matter of time for those guys. I, I think you can look at it as a situation where like, whoa, I don't know if I want to go to that league because of the elite coaching. Or it could be one of those where, man, to go match up against those guys night in, night out is a real appeal. It is a factor for, it was a factor for me to, to choose DePaul um, versus, versus not choosing. Is it too soon to ask about any, any developments as you build this staff out? Um, yeah. The, the one we've added uh, is, is uh, Jack Owens who's come with me from Ohio state. But uh, beyond that, it's, it's still a work in progress right now, John, and, uh, and will be, um, that and obviously putting our team together. Literally, I just got to campus, um, you know, a day ago last night and just got to the city. So press conference today. So we're working on it. Wintrust Arena was not around when you were coaching at Butler, correct? Right. When, when you walk in there, like, in my head, anytime I walk in there, I, I'm thinking, yeah, this is this is a beautiful building. What what can be like? Th there's some there's something there. There is, John. You that's exactly right. It's exactly right. You know college basketball. You know the arena size that fits places, um, and it's the right size. It's you know right around ten thousand. It's the right size. It is a beautiful setup. The game day setup, and they they practice here before 
Um, uh, you know, we'll practice here before we play games, uh, shoot around, uh, all those things. It's just a really good setup. You're sitting right now here in, in our locker room on game days. It's a beautiful space, John. So, uh, again, that was part of it. When I when I competed against him, it was All-State, which was not a great setup. Um, and, and while this isn't on campus and there's some challenges there, this is a beautiful facility and a great uh, arena to play in. Chris, finally, what's your message here as you get this off the ground? I, I know it's easy for a coach to come in. I've heard it countless times. Hey, give us a chance. Give us a chance. But you also said we will get there earlier when people are saying, can you get us to the dance? Can you get us to the dance? People hear that and they say, that's, that's what anybody aspires to do. What What's the messaging point to a fan base that, frankly, I say this all the time. They're deserving of it. This fan base, if you've stuck by DePaul, you are a true fan. You you deserve to see brighter days. Well, just what you just what I said in the presser uh, in the press conference, opening press conference. We will get there. We will get there. Um, I love what my AD Dwayne Peavy wrote a note when I got to the hotel room uh, when I arrived in Chicago. He said, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna be there with you. We're gonna build this thing brick by brick." And it's a really, it's a great thought and a great analogy. And I think that's, but we will get there. We will get there. And it's about, it's always about the people, John. And that's the priority number one is the right uh, players and the right staff uh, and begin there. But I love our administrative alignment. I think that's really important. And uh, we will get there. And I can't wait. I can't wait when we do. Looking forward to seeing you do it. Chris Holtman, the new head coach of the DePaul Blue Demons. Chris, congratulations, and thanks so much for your time. Thanks, John. Great being with you, man.